You are now listening to the Hunter's Advantage Podcast. We preserve the history and sport of hunting through curious conversation and action-packed hunts, as well as offering you tips and strategy for more successful hunts. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hunter's Advantage Podcast. This is episode number 130. And Hunt Talk episode number 16, and I am joined, well, first of all, I'm Christian Babcock, your host, and my co-host today, who can't seem to find the mute button, oh, he just found it, Jake Gaylord. How's it going, buddy? Oh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. What are you up to? Recording some podcasts. What's funny is that these people don't know how late we record these podcasts, 10, 20 on a Friday. You think the young youth of America, the 25-year-olds <laughs> are out partying? We're sitting here talking about deer hunting at 1020 at night. Just uh, ate up with it. I don't know anything else I'd rather be doing. I don't know anything else that I'm halfway good at besides, pickle, <laughs> besides pickleball. Maybe. We do have that saying. It's just like, listen, we're not good at, uh, or we're not great at anything, but we're good at everything. I or thought it was okay think. at everything. Yes. The more downscale you go, okay, or good, okay, bad, like, Think what we are, and then just go one tier down, and that's probably what we actually are. Passable. Passable, yes. Mm. Exactly. The Swiss Army knife of life. C's get degrees type type, type of guys, you know? Tell my GPA that. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, we last Hunt Talk episode, we talked all about uh, Jake's last leg of middle part of November all the way till now in December, an encounter he had uh, with a Big Ten on – one of his leases and now we're going to talk about the most recent kill from the hunters advantage crew the big seven in southwest oklahoma pretty good buck did carol get that one or i think he did that's weird he he just made me film all the b-roll for him and just be Uh, his actor but yes he he was the one pulling the trigger okay yeah and you drew the the bow back for him as well yeah, he kind of just came to the side when I and just went ska and yeah, made the tick. made the string. Mm, you know what okay. I mean? Yeah, something yep, like yep, that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So in did. other words, you shot the deer. You could say that the tag okay. says that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so how'd that go down? I want to talk a little bit about the property. Okay. That this went down on because a lot of the a lot of the videos that we've put out in the last couple of years have been on a particular lease down in Southwest Oklahoma. This is a new place that I have never hunted before. Um, about 120 acres, so almost a quarter section. Uh, what's funny about this place is we picked it up in the late late part of August, and I really didn't even have time. We were so focused on Kansas that I didn't even really have time to ever set this property up. So I remember the one time that I actually got to go down there and was, I was actually on my way home from Kansas. I stopped in Southwest Oklahoma, which was like two and a half hours out of the way and, um, put out a cell camera and a regular trail camera on a fence post in the pouring rain. And that was all I did to the place. Like there was an existing tree stand. Drew put up another tree stand, threw up a couple feeders. And that's pretty much the entire extent of what I had done to this place. But what's really cool about the property, it's a, it's a piece of river bottom ground. And so we knew like the river is kind of a natural funnel for those deer. And we can probably, uh, probably get on some pretty good ones coming up and down the river. So we picked up that lease late August, man. I had, uh, I had not touched it. My first hunt in there was December 3rd this year, which was pretty much You've been running cameras and stuff in there, right? Yeah, I put a, like I said, I put that cell camera and I put a regular SD camera. The thing about the cell camera, though, this is similar to the issue that you've been having with the stealth cam, like the three-year-old stealth cam. Well, I have a three-year-old version of a Moultrie, Mm. and it was my dad. So cell cameras have gotten so much smaller. This thing is like a brick. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's, it's freaking huge. And I put eight AA batteries in that thing, and it lasted about a month. Okay. And died. And what sucked about the cell cam was Drew put new uh, new batteries in it in November, and it registered in my app that it was like it had batteries, but it wouldn't take pictures. Okay. Yeah, mine was doing the same thing. 
it flustered me because it was res- registering like, okay, it's there. It's just mm-hmm. not taking photos. So was it actually dead? No. Okay. It was alive. Huh. See, that, that's the way mine was because mine, mine would say it had full bars, but the only way I figured out it was dead because for like three or four days, I was like, there's just no deer hitting this spot. Like, that's really weird. Like, usually you have the same like dinks or does that would come through. It was right. just nothing. And then I looked in like the cellular settings and it said last synced was like three or four days ago. And I was like, oh, so even though it said it was like still good and all that, but it hadn't registered back with the phone. So when I went out there and looked, checked it, it was dead. But that wasn't your case. No, um, it was alive. It just, I guess there was some issue with the server or like, I think sometimes you have to turn those cameras off and like maybe reconnect them to the app and that, but I wasn't there. Like the thing had been dead for a few months. He puts batteries in it and all of a sudden it shows back up, but it's not sending pictures. So also yeah. SD might've been full. I haven't, can't confirm that either, but. So when the camera was working good, like how was the pictures there? So I only had a camera on the North side of the property. Drew had a camera on the South. Um, I think I'd sent you some of the, some of the pictures from the South in the, uh, in the summer. We had some good deer in there, you know, probably a mid forties, 10, um, a real funky buck, kind of like the funky one I shot in 2021. Um, some, uh, some yeah, good eights. I remember, remember that funky one. There was one that was like almost identical to the one you shot last year. And I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Because you you already got that super funky one like and with the lease you have there's going to be a giant to walk out 100 percent. i didn't i was so happy that, that i didn't hunt and that one didn't walk by me because i'm a sucker for those ones i would have yeah, been like, but because i mean we've preached that mindsets change throughout the season like you know september early season you're like 150s only <laughs> and then you know you get to december and it's just like a spike anything that moves getting something flung at it. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is, but at the time we were like, you know, we had that mindset still of holding out. Well, what's funny about this place is, so we spent the reason I couldn't set up my private property lease in Oklahoma was because I was going and scouting public land in Kansas. Like I spent, we spent basically all of our time right. in Kansas and this place basically just got spent on the back burner, like put on the back burner. I wasn't really even planning on hunting this place. Like my plan this season was, Hey, I want to shoot one on private on my other lease. And I would prefer to go shoot one on public in our, uh, on our first week of November trip, you know? And when that didn't pan out, uh, this one quickly became another option. But one thing I really liked about this place and what we could, uh, what I was able to do with it was, you know, we always talk about the sit and soak strategy, like being able to stay out of a place as long as you possibly can stand it. And the, and then when you enter for that first time, it's going to be like dynamite. Yeah. That's exactly what happened here because Drew had hunted the place in October and shot a couple does. And then he killed a hundred, a mid one fifties, uh, 12 point. So a mainframe 10 with like twin flyers on each G2. Goodness. It was a beast. Yeah, I was in the most recent YouTube video. You can see a picture of it. Um, but he killed that buck like first week in November when we were on our trip and hadn't been touched. So that place was, you know, from November 5th on all the way to January 15th, there wasn't going to probably be another person that hunted it. And with all the rifle pressure and all the stuff that was happening around these places, dude, those cameras were going nuts. Like, Drew was sending me pictures of like three or like there was some pictures where in the late part of November, early December, there was three or four mature bucks in a picture, like one picture in daylight hanging out. And I was like, this is, this is pretty special. It's pretty freaking awesome. (laughs) Well, when you can do that, you know, not uh, most people have permission to one place, you know, like you, like we're talking about, we've had our spot or that one spot you can go to. You can't stay. If you want to hunt at all, you can't stay out of it all season. Mm-hmm. And through the luck of the draw of us being focused on in Kansas and stuff, it just kind of naturally kept me out of the place. And I think that's, I really do think that's one of the reasons that it had so many deer in it. Nobody, nobody touched it. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty freaking awesome. So when did that deer like first come into your life? <sighs> big seven so 
I wanted to, the weekend after we got back from the, um, our two week trip in November, you remember how you said you took last pod, you took three or four days off. Mm -hmm. Well, I did the same thing and we were at a friend's giving, uh, that weekend or sorry, that Thursday, like I came back on Monday or on Sunday. Um, that next Thursday we were at a friend's giving and Drew's sending me pictures. Like he's got this cell cam and he's already shot his buck in there. You know, he's not going to go in there and shoot multiple bucks. So he sent me pictures he's like, Hey, this, you know, that big 10 from the summer that we haven't seen all, all fall. He's like, he's back, you know, probably he's probably mid thirties, maybe, maybe break forties kind of deer. Nothing. I don't want to say nothing special, but as a 10 point, he's not a monster. He's a, he's a if very it's a good 138, deer. that's special, but a 13010, right. it's like, that's just like a good deer. It's a great, it's a good deer. Yeah. It's, a, it's talking a good Oklahoma deer. terms, just like for all the out of staters, like if you're from Michigan or something, you'd be like 130. Holy. I mean, you, you know, we and someone from Kansas will hear that and go, that's a dink. Shot a yearling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Drew had, had been sending me those pictures and he sent me that 10. He sent me that funky one. Remember the one that mm-hmm. we were just talking about? And he sent me this seven. And for anyone that's listened to the podcast a long time or just knows us personally, I am like the king of the narrow racked deer. You go down my wall, it's like 13 inches wide, 14, 14, 15, 15. Like my widest is like 17. And I just have never been able to kill a big wide deer. Just a and framey deer. I, I'm okay. A, you yeah. do have a framey deer, and that would be that eight point from southeast. Yes, hundred percent. But other than that, like they're all high scoring deer, but just nothing that nothing wide. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing wide. Nothing. Nothing super framey. Just you know, they got everything. They're just not wide. Um, and so I kind of like uh, you I'm, get that itch. Yeah, every season like in the start of the season, you kind of go to that place where you're like, okay, what don't I have? Well, I don't have a, I don't have a high scoring deer. You might say that, or someone might say I've never shot 130 inch eight, or I've never shot something super wide. And so that kind of becomes your goal. And when you see a deer, you kind of attach your goal to that deer. You're like that deer meets that goal. And I want to shoot that deer. And so when he sent me the two pictures, you know, the 10, the big 10, and then the, the funky one. And then he said, he showed me the seven when he showed me the seven. I was like, that is a framey deer. That is a very wide deer. And I was like, and for good for me, that buck was consistent. It was like every, every morning he was there every, every evening he was there. Well, I tell Lauren, so (laughs) this is when people start relationships start getting tested. I've been gone for two weeks. I show up on Thursday or, on third by by three or four days of getting good sleep, I'm telling Lauren on Thursday, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna have to go hunt this weekend. And she's <laughs> like, she's like, why? You you've been gone for 10 plus days and you need to go shoot another deer. And I'm like, he's showing up. I don't make the rules, you know? Like, <laughs> like I don't make the rules. Um well, our buddy Sarah and Dave are they're they're videographers and I shoot wedding videos on weekends, like sometimes and um, so I'll agree to shoot these wedding videos, um, as a video videographer on, uh, like months in advance. They'll be like, can you do the 12th of November? And it's like August 15th. I'm like, of course, you know, yep. can you do the 18th of December? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> you know? And so they, they tell me, um, at Friendsgiving, Sarah's like, I can't wait to shoot this wedding this weekend. You know, we're going to be out at the lake shooting a wedding. And I was like, who's we? And she was like, me and you, did you forget? And I was like, I didn't forget. I just didn't know. I didn't know. And, uh, Sarah was like, did you know he was shooting a wedding this weekend to Lauren? And Lauren was like, no idea. He told me he was going deer hunting. Mm, <laughs> and I was three under the bus. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, man, fake sick at that point. Yeah. Well now not only am I not going to spend the weekend with Lauren, she doesn't care if I go deer hunting or wedding. It's basically the same to her. I'm gone either way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I was not getting any brownie points on that one, but so I had to shoot the wedding and the whole time, like me and drew hadn't exchanged a bunch of cell cam picks because I had already shot a deer in Oklahoma and I wasn't super focused on the lease. And so I just told, I think I, me and drew were like, Hey, if there's anything special, like send me a picture, you know, other than that, like I don't need a picture all the time. Right. And 
so from that day on, like <laughs> I probably bugged Drew, but um, it was seemed like every two days I was like, anything new, anything good? And he'd like send me a daylight picture of the seven and I'd be like, nice. And then he'd be like, well, the 10 came around, you know, every five days, the 10 would show up. And I was just sitting there and I was like, well, I just got shut out that last weekend or the, that weekend. Well, the next weekend is Thanksgiving. Mm. Okay. So I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, we're done with Thanksgiving on, on Friday, right? The way it, la- it laid out this year, Saturday morning, we, I wake up and I'm like, Drew is still sending me pictures during Thanksgiving of the, seven. of the seven of the 10 of the funky one. And I'm like, God, please go like, cause I know it's not going to take all weekend. Like I'm either going to go in there and I'm going to blow it or I'm going to kill the deer one way or the other. Like one of those two scenarios is going to happen. What's that feeling like? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> you know? Um, but I knew that was going to happen. And, uh, I looked at the wind. So this spot needs like a hard South wind, uh, to hunt it. Of course the wind for like the next five days, it's like North, Northeast, North, Northeast. And I was like, just not going to work. I'm not going to make yeah, the six for my spots. You were probably out there like, yeah, yeah, right on it. Yeah. Well, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hunt. So I, <laughs> I knew it was probably not the time to push the agenda, especially, right. well, there's really no really reason to push the agenda because the deer, he's there. He's there every single day. I can't hunt him on a North wind. So I waited and it was, um, it was the weekend after Thanksgiving. And I was like that whole week, similar to what happened with the six by seven, um, that whole week, like every morning I'm asking Drew, what do we got this morning? He'd send me a picture of the seven. What do we got this morning? Send me the picture of the seven and the 10. Well, it all like, it all leads up to this, this moment. I'm like, you know what? I told Lauren, just like I just told you about the wedding situation of where you need to, uh, like I agree to these things like months in advance. Well, I agreed to a allegedly, I don't remember agreeing to this, but allegedly I agreed to a double date, triple date with uh, two other couples that are our friends no on, way. yeah, on December 2nd on a Friday night, you know, I use the Friday evenings to drive up to these hunting spots because mm-hmm. they're a long ways off for me. And so we go to like a Christmas bar this night, like on Friday night. A and triple, it's like a triple, triple double date, uh, triple, a date. triple date. Okay. okay. Triple couple date. What is that? It's just cute. It's just cute. <laughs> like, you, like, are are you good friends with these guys? Yeah, I, I actually am. I like the guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like the guys. I didn't. I didn't know if it was like more of a Lauren thing, dragging you so she can hang out, but she wants to introduce you to her best friends' husbands, and so y'all got to like act like you like each other just no. because your girlfriends are best friends, and it's like one of those awkward situations. No, not like that. Like she didn't okay. have to twist my arms. Like I want to hang out with these people too. Uh, but, because then you're just like sitting there like what's up you know and it's like oh yeah hey hey, hey so what do you do oh this is me at every gathering look at this deer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're like awesome and then they pull out their phone look at this one <laughs> they show you um no but i uh i had told lauren i was like i'm gonna go to this date sometimes i use these things as bargaining chips just marriage pro tip i was like i'm gonna go to this date and i promise you I'm not a super social person. Like as far as like going out with my people, I'm really social, but I'm not super outgoing is maybe the best way to say it. So I, I tend not to like to go out in big group settings, but I told Lauren, I promised her, I was like, listen, I'm going to be on my best behavior and I will not complain in this group setting. I will not complain if you let me go deer hunting after this. And she was like, okay, she probably complain. knew you're probably going to anyways. So just like, okay. So I'll get a nice date and he won't complain and he'll still go deer hunting. Like he was going to go anyways. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I did that. Um, Saturday morning. What do you know? Another North wind. So what I was like is like, I'll go on this, uh, this triple date and on the next morning I'll wake up super early, you know, like five o'clock and I'll drive all the way up 
you know, and by the time I get up there, it'll be probably noon, one o'clock. I'll get in the stand and hunt. Well, on that evening, it was supposed to be a southeast wind. I, uh, I get up there and I step out of the truck to start to put my gear on because I pretty much went, said hi to Jake Harris and then changed my stuff and I was going to the stand. I step out of my truck to put my gear on and the wind is starkly hitting me out of the north in my mm. face. And I was like, gotta love that weather app. Liar. Because like, <laughs> yeah. <"Liar." laughs> I was talking with Jake Ayers at the at the house and he was like, are you going to hunt that south spot? And I was like, of course. And he said, uh, he said, well, it's a north Picking wind. my nose, chill. <laughs> oh. He said, it's a north wind. And I was like, no, it's going to be southeast. I looked at my phone. It had changed completely. So I went to the, went to the north spot uh, that evening. And it was actually a pretty good hunt. While I'm sitting, you can see it in the video uh, that we just released. But <clears throat> while I'm sitting in the stand, dude, within 30 minutes of me sitting there, I see, I pull up my binos. I see a bunch of hogs crossing the river, like coming over at me. And when I say hogs, these aren't like regular, like, you know, the ones you see in Southern Oklahoma, like the little, they're, yeah. they're almost cute. Like they're like 50, 75 pounds. They're mountain pounds. hogs. Yes. Yeah. They're just like everything else around there. Small. These were Motley Whoppers. Like Corn they fed. were sitting, <laughs> they were sitting up off the ground. Like no joke. One of them would have been at my hip. Really? Dude, off the ground. I didn't take a seen stab it. at one or no. Well, a group of 25 come in. I counted them on the film. So the group of them, as they work through this brush, they're disgusting. They're loud. They're dirty. I, I like looked how long the, cause they walked single file through the woods. I don't know why they do that, but they walk single file. The, the line of hogs was 30 yards wide, like 30 yards long was, was hmm. the thing of hogs. That's how many there were. There were 25. The leader of the pack is, Dude, I'm telling you at my hip, like a black hog at my hip. Probably um, a sow. Had to have been disgusting pig. Like, almost, have you ever seen a long-legged pig? No, you never seen a long-legged pig, right? My uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but this is the first long-legged pig I've ever seen because this thing like it, it like sat off the ground higher. And I wanted, uh, I wanted to shoot it. They were like 45 yards downwind of me. I picked up my bow and I, uh, there was just limbs everywhere in between me and them. And I couldn't shoot them. Did you say they were downwind of you? Completely downwind. Okay. And they didn't wind you? Oh, they did. They okay, all, what's the they all ran past. Well, the big one comes back and I hear something going. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I'm getting blown up by a deer. I look back. It's the hog going. <laughs> yeah. I've because never heard a hog blow at anything ever. I've never heard a, a uh, hog blow, but, and plus I really didn't think that like, uh, like hogs could like, you know, smell and like actually wind a person. And I got winded on the, it wasn't the last year, but it was, I think it was a few years ago on our public land trip. And I was like, huh, I'll be dang. Like they're actually smarter. They than blew they at you. They didn't blow, but like they for sure winded me. Mm. I, yeah, I know their eyes suck, but I've always been told if you get if you have the wind right on a hog, you can kill them. Like you can walk hmm. ten yards from them if you have the wind right. You obviously know that because you shot that oh. one in the face with a yeah. with a with a shotgun. Yep. <laughs> but they uh yeah they win me and that one comes back and blows at me, which creeped me the frick out. Um, then I have a forky. This is I, I learned that this tree stand location sucks because everything came downwind of me. A forky comes completely uh, underneath me. He sticks his head in a piece of uh, just like a piece of it's not paper uh, foam foam on the ground, and his horn goes through it. And when he picks his head up, the piece of foam lays on top of his head, and it like kind of like a cap, like a ball cap, and it freaks out. Like he shakes it all off, runs off. <laughs> Saw that, and then. Um, Right before dark, probably 30 minutes before dark, I hear the um, I hear the feeder spin because Drew's texting me like it should be 545 or 445, something like that. That's kind of late in the evening. It was, a, but, uh, but the t time change. Right. Oh, so he just never changed it. Hadn't, gotcha. We hadn't touched it since the time change. Well, that sucker spins. Nothing comes out. I'm like, awesome. You know? drove six hours up here and something's wrong with the feeder you know he had filled it he's been he was really kind like he filled it but something was just wrong with it so i was like what the heck well 
you know, 30 minutes before, 20 minutes before dark, I look over in the, um, in the brush and you know how you, when you're sitting real still and you, something catches your eye and then you make the first, the first glance at something, you know, is something you probably want to shoot. Like we talked about the bow jumping out of your hand. Mm -hmm. I just saw a big frame, big frame in the grass at like 40 yards. And I was like, I like that. (laughs) <laughs> I, I had my bow in my hand. I threw up my binos, um, mid one twenties eight. And, but the thing is dude, he was wide. Yeah. Like he was probably 18 inches wide. Dude, that's the thing about, about those like framey deer. And when I say framey, like, I just mean like it, it has a presence of, of like a very big deer. Like it, even though it might score like 120s and you can say, you know, however you want to feel about a 120s deer, good or bad, I say good, basically yeah. wherever you're at in the country. But if you get those wide deer, they just have that presence of just like, yes, you're getting shot. Yeah, and they appear a lot bigger than they would score. You know, mm-hmm. you tell it, you still tell someone you shot a 120s, eight, it's like, oh, that's a pretty good deer. If the deer is 18 inches wide, and has a you know good beams or just like you said a frame on them, the deer's gonna look a lot bigger. Right, like my my funky buck from 2017. I don't know what he'd score. Not very good, but he frame has that. Up. Yeah, he has that presence. I don't, I don't. I forget how wide he was, but he's. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly what this deer was, and he got me excited. I threw my binos up, and I was like, he's just a real good eight. You know, he's got good twos, good eye guards. Threes were kind of weak or threes on one side. The three on one side was, was kind of weak. And, uh, what sucked is he looked like, um, as soon as I saw his frame, my first reaction was let's look at this body. I did, Let's not get all, let's not get all caught up in the antlers. Cause I want to look at the body. Cause that's going to determine if I can even shoot this deer. And so your uh, age over inches at this place, of course, at this place. Okay. Yes. Um, on private. Yes. Um, I look at him and dude, he looks like a hot dog. Looks like a noodle. Like he looks like he's got a hot dog torso and then he's standing up on four noodles. But this is December. This is like relatively post rut. He did not have a chest at all. Do you think that's just him slimmed down or do you think he just. Maybe, but you can still tell when a slimmed down deer is mature to some extent. The chest, um, this deer just didn't give me any indication that he was old and. Mm -hmm. I was like, he didn't stick around very long. I could have grunted at him or tried to do something like that, but I was like, no need. You know, it's, it's, if it happens, it happens. It happens. If he comes back by, I'll give him a better look. Um, but yeah, that was, that was evening number one. Um, had to hunt the north part of the property because the wind had shifted, but, um, Jake actually had his, so that was him. What do you mean? Like that deer on evening number one, that was the seven. No, that was a different. That was an eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's a mid, mid twenties, eight. Um, he's a good deer. I thought it was a super young deer. Okay. Well, he's shoot. A good one. Now I feel dumb. Cause the whole time I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the eight. Whoops. You're like, there he is. Or the seven. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. No, that was not him. Um, Jake had his buddy Kurt, Kurt in, um, and he shot his first buck. Uh, he's, he's from Michigan and lives in Texas, but he hmm. came up and shot his first buck. Um, that weekend. And so Jake and them had shot a buck. Uh, they had went and cleaned it early in the evening. We met him back at the house, me and Jake. I hadn't got to see Jake a ton this season, except for when we went to Kansas, maybe once. So we kind of stayed up BS and just really catching up from the last couple months. And dude, before I knew it, it was, it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I was like, dude, I got to go to sleep. Um, cause I had, I, I told you about that triple date. I had mm. woke up, I had woke or went to sleep at 2 a.m. the night before. I woke up at 4.30 to drive to Oklahoma. So I got two and a half hours of sleep. Okay. Well, I hunt all, all day that, or that when, as soon as I get there, I hunt. Um, I go to sleep at 2 a.m. the next night and I'm supposed to be up at 5.30. Sounds like you need a Red Bull for that breakfast. <sighs> Sounds like I need a rain orange dream sickle. Mm-hmm. Dude, good good flavor. The caffeine. <clears throat> it's got like twice the caffeine. <laughs> no sugar. No sugar. Uh, I, at that point, it could have 500 grams of sugar, and I'd be like, okay. It makes me feel like crap when I drink all the Red Bulls for the sugar, though, to stay up. 
The Hunter's Advantage podcast is powered by Out on a Limb Manufacturing. Out on a Limb is a family-owned company based right here in Oklahoma that makes tree stands, saddle platforms, climbing sticks, and so much more. Christian, I have a quick question. What's that? What bites sound harder, a hippo or an alligator? No idea. It's a trick question. The Ridge Runner 2.0 bites harder than both of them. But all jokes aside, we use these products all across the land on public or private. These help us get into any tree we want and hunt where the deer actually are. Most men go to the grocery store for their meat, but these products help you go to God's grocery store. I have used the Out on a Limb Ridge Runner 2.0 and the Shakar Sticks for the last few years hunting public land bucks, and I've actually shot several bucks out of this setup. If you want to support the podcast and get some Out on a Limb equipment, make sure to go to outonalimmfg.com and use code HNTA10 for 10% off at checkout. Once again, if you want to support the podcast, go to outonalimmfg.com and use code HNTA10 at checkout for 10% off. Now let's get back to the podcast. The rains make me feel like clean. You know, baby. it's momentarily though. Like when you're at camp and you crack open five Red Bulls, really, okay, I'm not trying to get off subject, but it was funny when we were there and Carol was like, yeah, I went to reach in the ice chest. There's only two Red Bulls. He said, we had two cases in there. And I know I only drank like three. Yeah, you probably you you at least like probably had twelve. I would say that trip, if not more, probably more. But <laughs> you guys, you guys, I, I remember one time at we got together at like eleven a.m. to uh, to eat breakfast, and and you were like cracking open an energy drink, and you're like, yeah, this is like my first one, or my for I think you said first one of the day or something. I was like, oh, I've already drank three. <laughs> it, was, it was 11 a.m. and I had drank three. Oh, my God. Dude, my heart was probably. You were probably like nodding off, but your heart was like, uh-uh, we're going to die. <laughs> Stay awake, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. Oh, my God, dude. It was so funny. The, the energy drinks keep me going. But mm-hmm. anyways, the moral of the story is that when I went down there, I was very much i was just exhausted and i just needed some sleep um so while i was in the sand the evening before drew sends me all the pictures of the bucks that showed up there was like the seven point showed up this brand new mature buck showed up like a five and a half year old eight point but he was broken off on one side the whole side he was just a narrow rack tight sucker and i was like i'd shoot that deer like he was super mature and so um i'm like man i need to get in there like these deer are in there every single morning Um, well I go to sleep and I have this bad thing on my phone where my alarms, when they go off, they don't go off at full volume. They go off. They're like, like it's a very subtle. No, 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 no. No. They do. Now they do. No, they do. They have been recently. Okay. Okay. But I can guarantee you your alarm will be on full blast and it wakes. You ever seen those memes where, where it says like, you love a person, how they set their alarm and it wakes everybody else up, but them. Mm-hmm. You sound, I'm you sound triggered. Right for, <laughs> you sound for, triggered for all the uh, podcast listeners. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, you can see my head shaking. But yes, that is Christian. He he will leave his alarm going for five to ten minutes in the morning, and then you'll turn it off, and then he'll be like, "Dude, my alarm didn't go off," and she's like, "No, it went off." <laughs> It went off. <laughs> I guess I'm a heavy sleeper. Yes. Anyways. Anyways. Um, your your alarm was loudly, but I guess it did yep. go off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. The truth. Well, um, I'm supposed to be up at 530 because this lease is about a, about five minute drive, like less than three miles from Jake's house. So I'm like, you know what? I'll pop up at 530. This, you can shoot at 650. You know, I'll wake up. I'll get in there 30 minutes before light. It'll be perfect. Well, I wake up and you know, when you grab your phone and it's not going off, the alarm's not going off. So you're like, Oh no, it's either 1 AM or it's seven, you know? And I've drove six hours one way up here. I'm like, I swear (laughs) if it is 7 AM, I'm going to break this phone over my head right now. And I look at it 615. I'm like, no, no, that's no. okay though because you got like like literally even now December sixteenth it gets daylight about like a, around seven where it's like not as dim, right? And it was super overcast 
this weekend, which okay, helped. Cool. So I freak out. Like Kurt has already shot his buck. Jake is taking Kurt out this next morning to shoot a doe. And so <laughs> it flustered me because Kurt walks in and he goes, Oh, I was up an hour ago. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, he said, I woke up, but I realized I'm only going to shoot a doe, so I don't need to be early. And I was like, (laughs) this is his first time ever going hunting. I was like, you weren't going to wake me up? And he was like, "Uh uh-uh. You look peaceful. Uh, You're going off. I thought thought you were just listening to music. Yeah. So (laughs) I get up, and I promise you, by the time my eyes are fully open and I see that it is 6.15 a.m., by that time, from that time to the time I stepped out the door, it was not 120 seconds later. It was not two minutes later. I'm not Dude, kidding. That's good, but it makes me so upset. Like, I just hate rushing as it is. We don't do it in public, though, typically. No, no, but, like, it just, it it automatically just sets the tone for the morning, though. Where it's just, it's like, bad e- everything's just, just so rushed, and you're just, like, you have no time to, like, A, wake up or do anything. Like, I just hate that feeling. Well, you you make mistakes and you scramble. Right. When you're scrambling, you're like, "Dude, I forgot my release." It's in the yeah, truck. Exactly. Like, <laughs> that's why we have backups. Yeah, that's that's how it usually works. Um, but no, I I pull into the lease. Like I'm pulling to where I'm getting out of my uh, out to walk in. It's probably a 500 yard walk, and I sat down in the tree, like my bow, everything, camera set up, 6:40. So. I woke up at 6.15, and this ain't a woke up like I was getting dressed, drinking coffee. I am in my underwear, woke up at 6.15. By 6.40, I am three miles down the road, 500 yards walked up in the tree, camera, GoPro, everything is rolling. This is a 25-minute period of time. And I remember sitting in the tree. It, dude, my cheeks don't touch the tree, the tree stand, and I hear, <laughs> I promise, they haven't touched the tree stand yet, and I hear, ch 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 and I was like, Oh, I thought you were going to talk about your, your, uh, your girl. No, I'll get stomach. to that. Okay. I'll get to that. <laughs> no, I have not sat in the tree for, they have not touched the, the stand for a second. And you know, in that hazy light, at, in that hazy light, like you can see a frame, an outline of a deer. Right. A silhouette. A silhouette. That's the, probably the way I would say it. With your bare eyes, you can see a silhouette. I see a silhouette of a big frame, like right in front of me. And I'm like, Oh no, my dude, he's right there. Like it's, has the feeder gone off yet? No. Oh yeah. That's yeah. yeah, That would would worry me. Yeah, it has. Well, he's sitting there. He's sitting there and I throw my binos up and I'm like, it's a seven point four on the left side, three on the right side, super wide. It adds up. I can't tell his body. I didn't know there's other seven points in here. So I'm like, that's the deer. That's him. Okay. Well, I take my camera and I crank the ISO way up. This footage is so grainy, but it didn't matter. Cause I was like, I'm getting this on footage. Well, I wait, I wait till shooting lights, six fifty. Um, he's sitting there. Not a long wait. <laughs> not not a long wait. I've been sitting down for a few seconds. Um I'm sitting there with my bow in my hand and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm about to shoot this deer. It's about well, to go down. It's about to go down. As I'm sitting there, I'm realizing this stand is not set up for a right-handed shooter. Drew's left-handed. He set up the stand. Mm. So the stand is completely set up for a lefty. I'm sitting in it to, sh- to shoot to where I need to go. I have to go like this, lean over, and like I have like one butt cheek on the stand and I'm like leaning off the other side and I'm like I'm I'm about to fall out of this thing to shoot well I get into uh, I, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm analyzing these things by the way while I'm sitting there I don't know about you guys I got the washing machine stomach like it's going ooh, 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 ooh. and I'm clenched it's hurting I am hurting bad my stomach is it it it's like I ate like a gas station Casey's hot dog, like mm. five of them the night before. It's it's Casey's bad. breakfast pizza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm sitting there looking at that seven, and I like I said, I have my camera on. I'm I've got my bow up. I'm like I'm I'm about to shoot this deer. As soon as I can see, I'm going to shoot this deer. And I hear, 
I look to my left. The the real big seven is standing at 15 yards. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's standing at 15 yards. So wait, my, were you drawn back on the uh, the false big seven? I didn't. I had not drawn back on him yet, but, but I was holding bow my bow ready. Hand. Was it was the D loop on? Was your yeah, I was on ready. The D-loop? Yes. Okay. So you th- okay? I, didn't I was know ready. That. I was like, that's yeah, a big seven. That deer is 18 inches wide. Well, I take a look to my left. I'm like, let's just make sure. I look to my left. Here's a deer with about a 50% bigger body than the one that I'm looking at. And I was like, all I see is this big frame. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's him. That, that I'm not looking wow. at the big seven. Now I'm looking at the big seven to my left. He's sitting there at 15 yards. As soon as he comes in, 655 there is deer trickling out from every direction. There's does coming in from the left. There's more bucks coming in from the top. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, I don't know how I'm going to get into draw. There's like, by this time, there's seven or eight different deer within a 30 yard radius of me. I go to, I pull back on the big seven. Of course, when I go to click my GoPro to record, it's like memory busy. I'm like, I've never got that message ever in my life. I'm like, what does that even mean? Memory busy. It's been in my bag all night. Battery's fully charged. It has space regardless. Um, I get into full draw on the seven. I cannot see a dang thing in my peep sight. Like I can see it's black. And you know how you talked about the aperture out of your rangefinder, Right. Like it c- kind of feels like there's, it's like dim and it's black around the most of it. That's what it looked on my peep. And dude, there is not a single piece of wind. It is silent. And my arrows make a <laughs> on my rest when I pull back. Well, I, uh, you gotta fix that, bro. Yeah. Got, got to be more diligent. Um, well, I can't see in this. I swear to you, the second I get in a full draw and I anchor, he goes, looks right up at me. And I'm like, well, this is over. I can't shoot. I can't hold the bow back for five how minutes. That, how did he look whenever he looked up at you? Like, were you looking at him or were you looking like at your like rest or release or something like that? When he I was looking through my you? peep sight and I'm like, I can't see this deer. So I kind of, you know, how you put the bow away from you a little bit, like mm-hmm. to let down. I'm going to do that, but I'm still in full draw. The bow's away from my arm or away from my body. And he just goes, did that not make you melt? So this is what happened when he looks at me and he throws his head up and he looks at me. The first thought in my mind was like, that's the widest deer I've ever seen in person. And I was like, I would love to kill that deer. And he throws it up, and I was yeah, like, Yeah, I well, think I'll have the sixty nine hundred mount, maybe one year <laughs> up, one year back. Uh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And he he looks up at me, and I was like, Well, this is all over. But it's still so dark that I'm like, I bet he's not going to get me. Well, he throws his head back down. I let I let down. So the only t- way that I can gauge how much time has passed now is I don't have my phone out or anything because it's super bright. It would be super bright. I'm looking at the recording on my camera on the minutes. So it's been recording for three minutes. I tell myself, okay, at eight minutes, I'm going to draw back again. Okay, I'm going to wait five minutes. You you have confidence enough that he would stay there for, for over five minutes. I have to because I can't see a jack in my peep sight. Uh, well, yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to wait. Wow. Hey, I wait five minutes. I draw back on him again. I get in my peep. And this time I can see a little more and I can faintly see my pen, like faintly. But I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm looking at the bottom of the pen, the top of the pen. I know I can see the pen. I was like, I can't. I Are can't you in timber it. or anything? Yeah. And I'm in a thicket really? uh, along the river, just a timber stand along the river probably a hundred yards wide. Okay. Um, and he's just at this point, dude, there's like, you can what see time it? it's like six fifty five, six, okay. almost seven o'clock. And I, I, at this point there's maybe 10 deer within 20, 25 yards. And I'm in full draw. I'm like, I can't shoot him again. Got to let down. Bo goes back down again. I do it again. I look over at the camera and it's like eight minutes. I'm like, okay. At 12 minutes, I'm going to try to pull back again. I'm sorry for interrupting and asking like these little small questions, but how far away is he at this point? This whole time, he is within 25 yards. So Dude, that is nutty. Is So you're setting in a ladder stand, correct? Yeah, but to be fair, this ladder stand is probably 25 foot up. Okay. Is there a lot of cover around it? Like, like are you pretty well hidden? I would assume not unless you just have like a whole bunch of branches around you because most really. I mean, December 3rd, all the foliage is off. 
yeah, this is the morning of the fourth. There is not much at all. Like this trees are stripped. There's no foliage. That's, These are not dude, that is bonkers. Twenty five yards and you were able to draw back. I mean, granted, I know it's dim and stuff like that, but at twenty five yards in the ladder stand, I don't care how high up you are, you were able to draw back and let down two different times. Yeah. Yeah. At twenty five yards. That's insane. Yards. So do you think that is a like like a testament to how unpressured that place is or, or I think what? so because I think so like at my lease in the blind I have corn there at 25 yards now but last year I had to set it at 40 at 40 <laughs> yards so they wouldn't bust you yeah because a group of doe would come in and they just do the bob and weave looking at and you trying to peek you out through the blind and then at my stand now where the feeder is it's 45 yards because mm-hmm. anything anything closer they just like they pick you off. Especially in that second part of the year where there's no foliage on the trees and there's nothing to break up your outline. But I think this is a, this is a testament to the kind of places that uh, we get to hunt and the pressure on them because I always went down and hunted with Jake and um, it was weird because we would have deer close to us, you know, like sub 30 yards. And he would somewhat be having a conversation like me and you are having right now. Really? And I was like, I'm like, what? And he'd be like, yeah, that's a pretty good buck. Like he'd say it like <laughs> that. And I'm like, and I'd look at him and then I'd look out at the deer and then I look back at him. I'm like, what are you it's, doing? That deer's still there. That's crazy. Yeah. Cause dude, where we grew up hunting, it's like you raise your finger to start putting it around the trigger. They're like, yeah. If you see a deer out in the field as you're driving by like a road and you even just barely hit the brakes to like slow down and look at it gone it's like roll 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 yeah it's like oh he's slowing down exactly that's insane well these deer are not like that and i think um obviously the more you more you keep taking off one member of the herd i bet the more they'll get like that but when True. you haven't put any pressure on a deer you know you've hunted in a place like that two to three times in a 70 day period of time they're not going to be super spooky they're just not going to be and, you know, have you noticed it in a lot of, I know we're going off a topic right at the climax here, but it's have fine. you noticed in a lot of the, uh, like celebrity hunting pages per se, like they will have deer at 20 yards and you see them like I'm talking world-class deer, 180 inch deer, and they will grab the window when the deer is standing at 20 yards and they open it up yep. like, like, like they're about to go clean it or something. Why can you do that on a deer? If you did that in 90% of the country, especially a the window like that. One. Right, a smart deer. Why that can is, you do that? Is that is kind of crazy. No, but you see it. I'm yeah. not calling people out, but you see it on Drury. You see it on uh, the the Bomar bow hunting all the time. There'll be a giant buck at, at 25 yards, and they'll be like, let me open this window. And they'll grab it and open it. And it's not slow. They'll open it. And then the deer's just like... Yeah. And you think like, oh, these are, these are stupid deer or something. No, they're just acting how like a deer would. You give them... If you don't have a reason... They don't have a reason to be on high alert all the time. They won't be. And that's what I've learned about these kind of places. So that is true. That is true. Yeah. That's, that's kind of nutty. Once you, once you kind of put it like that, cause around, around my lease, it's like all the deer have like schizophrenia. It's almost like a sixth sense. They have to develop it. Yeah. Um, and it's almost like they come in with their head not on the ground, their heads like in the trees. Well, there's that. And then let's say you have a corn pile and a group of doe come in, they're alternating. Like one eats while the other three have their head up chewing, like surveilling. And it's just, it, it's insane. Yeah. These deer um, are not like that because I think it is a testament to the the way that we hunt. We try to hunt on the wrong, the right winds. We try to not hunt often. Um, and we try to only shoot mature bucks. So these bucks coming up three, four, five years old, or two, three, four years old, they don't have a reason to be scared. You know what I mean? And so it's almost like they go, they come into maturity and they don't have a reason to act any different. You know what I mean? So it, I don't know. It's odd. It's very weird. And some people might hear that and be like BS, but it's just my experience. So these deer aren't moving. And, um, I told you I was looking at eight minutes. I drew back for the second time. I couldn't see. Right. I drew back again at 12 minutes. So this deer has been standing at 25 yards That's for 12 insane. minutes. I, every time I'm looking at him, I'm like, this is the widest deer I've ever seen. 
I want to shoot this year so bad. Like this would be the perfect exclamation point on a good season. And I'm just sitting there looking at him and I'm like, I can't think about, I can't think about it. And the whole time my stomach's washing machine. Well, 12 minutes, I draw back. I lean way out. Um, I've got him framed up. I've got everything good. And I lean way out and I'm so uncomfortable in this tree stand because it's like a, you know, those trees that you, you kind of want to set your tree stands up in stands that lean back. So you can at least lean back a little bit. And if mm-hmm. you want to sit forward, you can, this tree stand is like the tree stands here and the tree is leaned like this. So you have uh, to like hunch over. Right. And so like I'm hunched over, leaned out and I'm not comfortable, but when my pin settles on the bottom part of the deer, you know, we always try to account for some sort of duck even with unpressured deer, I put it on like the very bottom of them and I'm starting to raise up a little bit. But as I'm raising up, I'm pulling through my shot. My shot breaks like, so are, are, you, are you using a back tension or, or this is a no. the moment I was using the moment by Cobra archery. Okay. So this is just my wrist strap release that I've used for years. I'm shooting a thumb button release. Now I switched to exclusively a stand. Um, but this was my last year with a wrist strap. I'm pulling through my shot, trying to focus on that. And my shot just, it breaks clean, but it breaks low. And the pin's barely on the deer. The deer barely reacts at all. And you can see it in the video. It looks like, it really looks like the, uh, that I barely nicked him. Like, shot him and just hit some hair on the bottom of him. And, like, that's going to be it. Now, dude, my stomach is hurting so bad that I didn't even care. Like, I shot the deer and I nicked him and I was like, I'll have to deal with these negative emotions here in about five minutes because this is bad. Because you got to get rid of some more negative emotions. emotions. Yes. yes. The demons. Um, so, I, long story short, I use the restroom and I can finally think straight. And I'm like, okay. Okay, just for the audience so they can get a clear visual. One or two? Because sometimes, like, if I was a pee ever hurt your stomach? Yes, yeah, sometimes I wake up like 2 a.m. And I got to piss. <laughs> and, and like, like you know, you're tired, so you try to fight through it, and you're, then, then, like, you fall asleep for, like, another 30 minutes, and all of a sudden you're, like, almost balled up. At least I am. I don't know if I have a problem or what, but, like, it's like you waddle in there because it's hurting so bad, your stomach hurts so bad, and then you piss. And you're like, wow, I can stretch out now. Well, Anyways, continue. This wasn't one of those. Well, as I'm going to do all this to like use the bathroom. Liquid or solid? No comment. Was it a gobstopper? No comment. <laughs> yeah, all right, it was go. a Mike Tyson to the right, to the, to the ribbies is what okay. it was. Okay. Um, as I'm like focused on this, because the second I'm wearing these like Sitka bibs and I'm wearing my really nice Sitka jacket, uh, I have to like take off the jacket, take off my orange vest, take off the bibs. And as I'm doing all this, I'm like, God, dude, I got too many layers on. Like, you know, you can't get stuff off fast enough. And as I'm doing that, I look out to where the buck has ran and I see him standing there and I'm like, Oh, like he's, he's not gone. So like, I'm, I'm thinking like, Oh man, I'll get my bow and I'll try to shoot him again. How far is he? 50. Really? So he was, he was at 25 when I shot him. He ran, he only ran 25 more. And, and you use the bathroom and all that stuff, and he's still standing there. No, this is before I use the bathroom. Oh, okay. this is as I'm stripping my clothes off. Okay, okay, this is after I'm stripping my as I'm stripping my clothes off and trying to use the bathroom. Um, he's standing there <laughs> because if people watch you do like use the bathroom, he's like, dude, that dude's in more trouble than I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give up. He needs this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as I'm taking all uh, my jacket off and stuff. I look over and I see the deer standing there like at 25 yards further than where I shot him. So about 50 and you know, you see him do that wobble mm-hmm. and I'm like, huh? And then all of a sudden he flips on his back and just goes and starts kicking. Really? And I was like, what the frick? I was like, I heart punched him. Cause I thought I barely nicked the bottom of him and I smoked him, like hit him, uh, probably three inches behind the shoulder, but he was quartering a little bit. It came out right in the elbow or right in the armpit of the other sliced a heart all up. Like he runs, he runs 25 yards and just kicking over. And, uh, it was nuts. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that I heart punched him. And I, I remember thinking as soon as I watched him flop over, I was like, I'm lucky. 
That was not me. That was a terrible <laughs> shot. It was not a good shot. It was not, uh, I, the stand was not set up the right way. I should have been there on time. I should have used the bathroom before I went. And I was just thinking, God has favored me here because I, sh- this was not me. Like this is complete luck. And I set up in the tree and I was just like, I'm lucky. If it was meant to be, it'll happen. If it was meant to be, it'll happen. And uh, it did. I'm looking at that book right now just to try to get. So explain it. Explain the book. Oh, the well, book. I guess you can, like, after you walk up to him, I guess. Well, I had seen him in trail camp several times and I knew he was wide and framey. Um, I can tell you from the whole time I spent looking at him, he is a. He's 19 and one quarter inch wide. He is a set mainframe seven. So G1, G2 on one side, G1, G2, G3 on the other. And he has a kicker coming off the base. That's I think two inches. So he's yeah, really so, so, so basically he has five on, on the left side because the left side has the kicker and then he yeah. has three on the right. Yeah. He's nice deer. Yeah. Super wide. Uh, longest time. I think he's eight and a half. Um, he's just a super framey deer. Like he doesn't have much else. Like, he has the presence of, of of a much bigger deer. Yes. Or a much higher scoring deer. Cause I'm not going to say bigger. Cause right. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean, but it's just hard to translate. What, what I told everyone else, we like to do a lot of our, uh, relative size judgment by saying like, if he was an eight or if he was a 10, he'd be this, you know, cause it helps you get a better idea. I told Jake and Peyton, I was like, if he was a, a, a normal eight point, I think he would be about 130 inches. That's what I said. If he was, had a G2, a G3, yeah, if he had all of it, I think he'd be about 130 inches. He's a seven, so he's not. Um, but he's a super wide buck. I sat up. I called I called Lauren. She didn't answer. Called you. You didn't answer. Called Paid. Well, you also got to think this was like a Saturday at seven, and I'm not hunting. Why morning. weren't you in the woods? Okay, so if you were hunting, it, was this it a was north? Sunday. Or, it was a Sunday. Was this a north or south? South so. wind. There, there's why. Yeah. There's South, why. Southwest wind. There's why. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there's you guys why. weren't hunting. I called Pate. He answered. Uh, what was funny is, uh, he's like, did you really get one? I'm like, yeah. I was like, I need you to come here down here and help me drag it out. He's like, nope, just send me pictures. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just send me pictures. It could have been a 200 inch. He'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Send me pictures. Stop by on your way home. Yeah. So he went back to bed. Um, I got down, walked up, um, man, the Thunderhead and the Exodus MMT has been deadly since November, um, since mid November when I started using that combo, but I, I blew right through them. If you look in the video, it looks like I don't even get a pass through. It looks like I just skimmed the bottom of them. Did you see that on the hit? I did. I did. And it just looks like it just goes straight down. Exactly. That's the only indication that, that you even hit the deer. Is they get straight down? Is the the arrow just like somehow deflects and goes straight down? It was the weirdest thing, um, but that happened, and I was a. Uh, I, I got down, picked up the arrow. Of course, it was soaked in my heart blood. I didn't even look for a blood trail because I'm like, I see the deer. Yeah, I see you know, fall. like so. I walked up to him, and I remember grabbing him, and I kind of curled my index finger around him and picked him up, and I was like, "This is a wide deer. Like, this is a framey deer." And I just sat there and held on either side of him how wide he was. And I was like, this is just awesome. I probably sat there with him for 20 minutes just looking at him. So there's there's that weird like feeling. I haven't felt it in a very, very, very long time. I remember it though. Yeah, I, I remember the feeling of once you like all that craziness is done, you know you get him and you're just like sitting there in the stand and you're just like, wow. There's like, I don't know if it's bliss or it is bliss, I think, but it's just like that. It's a weird feeling. I know you can describe it a little bit better or a lot better, but I'm just like my, it's almost like my work here is done. There's nothing more I can do. Like it it feels weird, like talking normal in a stand and you're just like, wow, like it's done. Well, it's weird because you put so much um, pressure on trying to get it done and trying to kill a mature animal. And it's almost like 
there's this constant feeling or ner- it's not even an anxiety. It's like more like a nervousness. Like if he comes in, am I going to be able to get a shot? If he comes in, am I going to be able to hit him right? Am I going to, you know, there's all these questions. And when it's finally over, it's like a, whew, like, it's like right. a bliss. But the thing is the second that I know it's over, the second I watch that deer fall, I want, I want to be, I want to go back to the nervousness. It's like, I don't want it to be over. Like I, I don't want that, that nervousness. Cause that's kind of what keeps me going after it is that, that uncertainty. And it's almost like, I want that back to like redo it again. I want to re. I don't want to go like, like sound too try hard or whatever, but it's almost like you want that challenge. And I know that sounds super like David Goggins, like, Oh, you know, stay stay hard. hard. Yeah, (laughs) no, no, that's not what I mean. But it's just like, I know what you mean. Like you don't want the chase to be over. Yeah, you don't. You don't want it to be over. And when it's over, it's, um, what do they call that? Um, bitter, it's bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah. It's like, I'm holding the deer. This is incredible. Like same thing when I shot the six by seven this year, I was like, wow, I have looked at you for, I've looked at you for dozens of hours. I have, I have laid in bed at night and stared at you for 30 (laughs) minutes on a video, wondering how wide you were, wondering how long these times were, wondering how old you were. Like, it's almost like it, it's an obsession. It's like, I don't want this to be over because now I can't chase you anymore. You know, I can't, I don't have a reason to scramble out of bed at six fifteen. Obviously and there's God always going to be the next one. Eight tags. He did. <laughs> there's always going to be the next one. Yeah. But it is a bittersweet when that, when that one, when it goes away, when that, that chase is over. And that's kind of what we were talking about. What I think about in the last pod, when we talked about the big 10 that you're going after is um, I didn't have a super long history or a super long chase with this seven. So he he's not as personal to me. I, I enjoyed shooting the deer and it was an awesome moment. But when you have the layers to that story, like I had with the six by seven, like you had with the 10, that's what makes it even more fun is because you but have all that. Those, those little quick gimmies, those are cool too. They're cool too. I shoot them. I'm, I'll, I, sh- I love when those. a big one on public walks by. <laughs> yeah. I will too. Um, it's special either way. It's just a little bit different when you're chasing one that you've known about for a long time. Um, so, no, it, it was awesome. I had to load that deer up by myself. I hit a massive 220-pound uh, deadlift on him. Okay. Mm, you can see that in the video. Cramping up this, on the way home. Nice. <laughs> dude, this deer was a long deer. He wasn't a super thick deer he was just long like if you see in the video like he looked long-legged and tall but he stood above all the other three-year-olds so um did he look run down at all i think so he did i think and so he was a big body deer was he stinky still like like was his hawk stinky? no no i don't think so um they might have been a, a little bit but definitely not like one that would make you take notice mm-hmm. you know when you shoot like a rutted up one um he looked ran down he he just like he had that presence around all the other deer where they were just like that's the guy don't don't mess with that guy like when he would move or like take a step at a deer they'd be like and like go back yeah he he was that fella um but super cool buck no he's i I told you i was like i was like dude you had the season of seasons because you got you got a high like your highest scoring deer and also your widest deer in one year those are two big check marks. Yes. Yes. And yeah. Oh my goodness. Like that's congrats. That's Thank you. A great year. A great book. Uh, it was, it was awesome. It's, it's over for me. Uh, my next, uh, my next adventure is behind the lens of a camera. I don't know. There might be a couple of those calling your name. I hope so. I still like blasting. Justin told me that we can have a, uh, a deer cleaning party at his place okay so he, he he still has the doe that i shot in public and mason's buck and his buck to process so he said if we shoot a bunch of does during the holiday we can all go over there and process seven or eight deer in a few well, hours with my track reason. record the only thing i'll be bringing over there is some bush apple so some bush apple and some uh some meat packages yeah hamburger yeah. hamburger well i brought the ziplocs here we go <laughs> <laughs> now nah, well i i think we can I think we can lay some brownness down yep, uh, yep. on some dozos, but yeah, that that's, that's the story of the seven for 
if you didn't get the full story on a 12 minute YouTube video, there's an hour long podcast talking about one tier. So that's all I got for that one. Uh, well, is there anything we missed about it? Nope. There cool buck. Go. go check out the video. Great buck. Go check out the video. More stuff to come. Hope you guys are enjoying the video version of the podcast. And if you guys want to hear more stuff like this, whether it be successes, failures, fails, a lot, a lot of fails. Uh, but yeah, go check us out on TikTok. We're on Instagram, YouTube. You can stop by Facebook, but that's for your grandparents. Yeah. Go leave us a rating or review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you guys so much, and we will catch you guys in the next video. Jesus loves you. Bye. Thank you guys so much for checking out the Hunter's Advantage podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to the podcast. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.